Charles Sanders Peirce (1839–1914) was an influential American philosopher, scientist, and logician. Emerging in the late 19th century, Peirce's prolific career intersected a multitude of disciplines, including mathematics, astronomy, chemistry, physics, and psychology. This interdisciplinary approach shaped his philosophical contributions and method of inquiry. As a polymath immersed in the sciences, Peirce sought to develop a philosophy grounded in logical reasoning and the scientific method. Dissatisfied with abstract metaphysical debates detached from concrete realities, he pioneered the philosophical school of pragmatism. Peirce's pragmatism emphasizes the practical applicability and outcomes of philosophical ideas, diverging from the idealistic philosophical trends of his time. While Peirce grappled with obstacles throughout his life, including lack of recognition and financial instability, his work proved foundational for 20th century philosophers and remains relevant today. This lecture provides an accessible introduction to the core tenets of Peirce's philosophical worldview for junior students, exploring pragmatism, semiotics, fallibilism, and phenomenology through clear explanations, examples, and analyses of their implications for everyday life. The evolution of Peirce's pragmatism. At the heart of Peirce's philosophical project lies pragmatism, a method of clarifying abstract concepts by examining their practical consequences. Peirce first introduced pragmatism in 1878, outlining it as a maxim for determining the meaning of words and ideas. The pragmatic maxim defines the meaning of a conception based on the conceivable practical effects of that conception in hypothetical or real experience. To illustrate, consider disputes over the metaphysical concept of free will. Peirce argued that the pragmatic meaning of free will depends on identifying the absorbable differences its existence would make in practice. What experimental phenomena would occur if free will exists that would not occur without it? The pragmatic maxim compels philosophical debates to connect to practical realities. Peirce later named his specific brand of pragmatism pragmaticism to distinguish it from other interpretations of pragmatism emerging in the late 19th century. Pragmaticism emphasizes logical and practical consequences rather than psychological or sociological outcomes. For Peirce, pragmatism was not merely a problem-solving tool, but an entire method of philosophical thinking. The scientific method provides a paradigmatic model of Peirce's pragmatism in action. The value of scientific theories lies not just in their theoretical elegance, but in their ability to predict observable phenomena and enable effective interaction with the natural world. Peirce's immersion in the sciences permeated his philosophical orientation. Semiotics, the study of signs, in addition to pragmatism, Peirce made pioneering contributions to semiotics, laying foundations for the study of signs and meaning-making. At the core of Peirce's semiotics is the triadic structure of the sign, consisting of the sign itself, word, image, symbol, etc., the object to which the sign refers, the interpretant, the sense made of the sign. This model emphasizes the sign's relationship to its object and the interpretation it evokes in the mind. For example, smoke, sign, indicates fire, object, and may provoke the interpretation, interpretant, that danger is present and action is needed. Peirce classified signs into three fundamental types, icons, indexes, and symbols. Icons resemble their object through similarity, as a portrait resembles the photographed person. Indexes connect to their objects through causation or correlation, like a thermometer indicating temperature. Symbols associate with their objects by convention or agreed-upon rules, as with language. Peirce's semiotic taxonomy provides philosophical insight into how signs acquire meaning. Traffic signs, for instance, use a combination of icons, pedestrian crossing, indexes, yield sign, and symbols, stop sign, to convey meaning and regulate behavior on the road. Fallibilism. The uncertainty of knowledge. Peirce also advocated for fallibilism the view that human knowledge is perpetually subject to error and no belief can be held with absolute certainty. This orientation accepts that even our most firmly established theories may require revision given new evidence or perspectives. As a scientist, Peirce recognized that knowledge evolves through a continual process of inquiry. Fallibilism promotes intellectual humility and adaptability to changing realities. Rather than reaching a final destination of certainty, the quest for truth is an ongoing journey. For example, scientists once accepted the geocentric model of the solar system as an immutable fact, 
but new astronomical evidence eventually disproved this theory, improving humanity's understanding of the cosmos. The fallibilist acknowledges that today's scientific orthodoxies may similarly be improved or overturned through future inquiry. Intellectual progress requires a willingness to confront our own fallibility. Fallibilism has contemporary resonance in an era of exponential knowledge growth and heightened complexity. It prompts us to hold all views tentatively, nurturing open-mindedness and continuous learning. Pierce's fallibilism remains intellectually liberating. Phenomenology, firstness, secondness, and thirdness, to analyze different modes of experience, Pierce developed phenomenological categories, firstness, secondness, and thirdness. These categories dissect phenomena according to their qualitative, relational, and conceptual aspects. Firstness encompasses the raw, unprocessed qualities of experience. The distinctive taste of a mango or the vivid hue of crimson represent firstness, they are qualitative phenomena needing no relation or comparison. Secondness conveys the realm of action and reaction, introducing polar relations between experiences. Pushing against a wall or the force of one billiard ball striking another demonstrates secondness. Some dynamic duality is required. Thirdness introduces habits, thought, and continuity. It enables moving beyond isolated instances to generalization. For example, the rules of chess exhibit thirdness, involving not just playing one specific game, but understanding and transmitting the overarching system of how chess is played. These phenomenological categories provide philosophical tools for dissecting the textures and facets of experience. Consider for instance our experience of a bee sting. The sharp pain exemplifies firstness, slapping away the bee, secondness, and the habitual avoidance of bees in the future. Thirdness. Pierce's phenomenology supplies fine-grained distinctions to analyze meaning, being, and knowledge. Implications for everyday life. To illustrate the practical implications of Pierce's semiotics in everyday communication, consider the common scenario of text messaging. Scenario. You receive a text message that could be interpreted in multiple ways, leading to potential confusion. Semiotic analysis. Recognize that the text message is a sign, and its interpretation relies on the interplay of symbols, icons, and indexes. Ambiguity may arise due to the absence of nonverbal cues and contextual information. Resolution. To address the ambiguity, engage in clarification. This could involve seeking additional information, providing context, or explicitly expressing the intended meaning. By doing so, you leverage Pierce's semiotic principles to ensure a more accurate interpretation of the communicated message. This example illustrates how a semiotic awareness of signs and their potential for misinterpretation can guide individuals in navigating and resolving communication challenges in daily interactions. Beyond their philosophical applications, Pierce's ideas resonate with many facets of contemporary life. His pragmatic maxim, for example, can enhance decision-making by assessing the practical upshots of choices under consideration. Pierce compels us to balance theoretical and abstract concerns with grounded realities. His semiotic framework illuminates the world of signs embedded in communication, media, and culture. We can apply Pierce's semiotic lens to decode meanings in our interpersonal discourse and public spaces. Likewise, embracing fallibilism can nurture intellectual humility and cognitive flexibility. Instead of regarding mistakes as failures, fallibilism promotes viewing missteps as opportunities for learning and growth. Pierce's phenomenological categories also enable finely analyzing textures and layers of experience. The firstness in aesthetic response, the secondness in relationship dynamics, the thirdness in social institutions. Such philosophical tools hold practical value for navigating the richness of life.